Good morning all, welcome to my channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've put out a video. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a new location. I moved and it's taken me some time to be able to get my new office up and operational. Um, finally feel like I'm getting close to being able to put some videos out. I've got my rack behind me and it's almost complete so I can start utilizing it for some of my tutorial videos. You know, today I wanna to talk about, you know, a question that I see and get asked a lot is home lab. Do you really need one? What do you need to get started? and where do you get your hardware? Uh, the fact of the matter is there is no one size fits all when it comes to building out your home lab environment. Um, your home lab can be as big or as small as you want it. Um, I'm someone who is fairly addicted to hardware, uh, so naturally my lab is rather excessive. Um, I also use it to create the videos for my channel, so it's, I kind of use it more than just a lab. You know, answering the question, uh, do you really need a home lab? Uh, I guess that really depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what your goals are. I've never seen a job description that requires someone to have a home lab. Um, it's not a required or needed thing in that aspect. Um, I do find, and this is my personal opinion, that those who are truly passionate about IT and infrastructure and that sort of thing uh, in general, they often have some type of lab environment at home, whether it's cloud-based or physical, et cetera. Um, you know, it could be as simple as a few virtual machines on a laptop. It, you know, I find that people that are passionate about IT tend to experiment at home. Uh, getting started with a lab, it is likely you can get away with, uh, you know, a moderately powerful desktop or laptop running anything from Hyper-V, VMware Workstation, or VirtualBox, or, or any of those types of uh, hypervisors. Um, you can create a test environment on that alone. You know, so I would start there and see if that does what you want it to do. Um, you can always, you know, if that covers you, great. Um, you can always make your lab bigger later on if you want. Uh, a lot of entry-level techs start out with an old laptop or a desktop. It's, it's a relatively inexpensive entry point. If you decide you want more for your lab, uh, there are many places that I look for used or outdated hardware. Um, I do have some new equipment in my, my rack, but largely the majority of my hardware has been acquired from employers or clients' e-waste piles. Uh, companies typically have to pay to dispose of old hardware, uh, so they can be willing to give it away. It never hurts to ask. Um, there are data security implications, so don't be surprised if the answer is no, um, or that you may need to leave the hard drives or SSDs behind. Um, you can replace those items, they're not terribly expensive, and the cost is usually fairly minimal compared to buying a whole piece of equipment. I've also been successful at leveraging eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace over the years uh, to source hardware. Uh, Reddit's Home Lab Sales subreddit is also a good resource. Uh, if you're good at tinkering and fixing things, you can often find good deals on broken hardware and repair it. Um, broken hardware could be anywhere from missing parts, not tested, or not functional at all. Uh, I've done that myself over the years uh, many times. Um, another option with the prevalence of cloud services like Azure and AWS, you could certainly get away with having, uh, you know, from having any hardware, physical hardware, in your lab if you so chose. You could have a lab that's fully virtual. Um, however, there can be substantial costs with this method. Um, it's not necessarily cheap. They have free tiers, but they're fairly limited into what you can do with them, um, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So, with all that being said, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe below, um, and I will see you all in the next video.